Urza Lorehide Artificer was one of the most powerful cards in the modern format until Astrolabe and Oko got banned. And since then, the card has almost seen no play. But since the Fury ban, Urza has been taking leaps back into the modern format. They are doing this by playing the Thopter combo version of the deck. And if you've not seen this combo, it involves Thopter Foundry, Urza, and a Sword of the Meek. The way that this works is that you can use Urza to tap the Sword of the Meek, sacking it to Thopter Foundry, which makes one mana. And then when you do that, Thopter Foundry makes a token, which is an artifact, and brings back the Sword of the Meek. And while infinite mana is nice, it also gets you infinite life and infinite power. And while that's the main combo, this deck is also playing powerful cards like Urza's Saga alongside Esper Sentinel, Stoneforge Mystic with the Cauldra Package, and cards like the One Ring. So we're going to be taking Urza and this sweet list through a League of Modern to see if this card is finally back on top. Match one, we're on the play, and starting hand looks strong. Bleed on turn one, Hallowed Fountain into an Esper Sentinel. Ooh, it looks like we're up against Burn here. And they show a Talisman of Progress on top. We'll play our Island into our Talisman of Progress, and then a Portable Hole taking out their Goblin Guide. And we'll poke in for one. Once it spends a Rift Bolt passing, we'll play out our Strand into a One Ring, and attack in for one. And in their upkeep, they target our Esper Sentinel with the Rift Bolt, gain the one. They flat a land, and we'll draw a card. Find a Saga, we'll draw two. Oh my lands, we'll play out a Saga into another One Ring. And in response to that, they do Boros Charm Us. When it does land go, we top deck another Stoneforge, play one of them out, and we'll pick up a Cauldra, play out a Seacom Coast, passing. In step, a Boros Charm Us, play another land into a Searing Blaze, uh, into a Riffolt, we'll activate the One Ring, and yeah, we have nothing here, so we'll scoop it up and get on to sideboarding. We're gonna take out Pithy Needle, Relic, and three One Rings for three Solitude and two Fluster Storm. Game two, all we need is a land and this hand's good, so I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit and keep. Bleed on turn one coast, passing. Then it goes turn one mountain into guide. Please land. Let's go! We draw a stone forge. We'll go planes into a sword of the meat. Oh, another goblin guide for the opponent. Into a swift spear. Oh my. And we draw a portable hole, so we'll play both of our holes out. Taking out the swift spear and a goblin guide. Opponent plays a land and cracks it, drawing a card, attacking it with the guide. Giving us another portable hole. Okay, we'll play that out, taking out the guide. Opponent plays out another land into cracking it. No land for us. Uh, we can play out our Thopter Foundry here. Nothing from the opponent. So we'll play out a cavern we draw, naming Artificer, and pass back. Just gonna activate Thopter Foundry here. And they go for a Boros Charm. Will Metallic Review. Then we'll just activate our Thopter Foundry, gaining life. And I think we should win this one. I'm gonna play the land into a Searing Blaze, taking out a token. Into another Searing Blaze. Oh, we find a land. Let's go. We'll fetch out Island. Make our Urza uncounterable. And then we can go infinite here. Let's go. You thought. And opponent scoops it up, seeing that we have infinite life and infinite power. And we will get on to game three. Game three, starting your hand looks quite strong, so we'll keep. <laughs> opponent goes turn one vantage into a guide, revealing a stone forge. So we'll actually cast out our solitude, killing their guide. And we'll lead on turn one planes, pass. Opponent plays out a land and then upkeep Boros Charms us. Find a Nettlesis, we'll go iron into a talisman oh and they have a smash to smithereen taking out our talisman saga off the top huge draw play that out into an edelsis someone plays out a swiss spear and attacks in we will not lock into a wear tear killing our saga oh my that's such a good draw play out Ottawara, play our shadow spear and equip spear to our germ back in we take those someone plays land into a searing blaze taking out our germ into a play with fire and they attack in for three putting us down to six. We draw a land, we'll play that out, fetch, pick up a planes, play out Stoneforge, and we will pick up a Cauldra and do equipping Stoneforge with our Shadow Spear. The opponent bolts down our Stoneforge Mystic into a Lava Spike getting us, so we have to say GG's and get on to the next map. We're on the draw, and starting hand looks quite strong. It goes turn one Sacred Foundry in a Ragavan, and they're also playing a Giganta deck. We draw a Talisman, we'll go turn one Coast into a Portable, and it fetch Shocks and then plays out a Avu. Ooh, a Citadel's a good one. We'll play that into a Talisman and then play out a Portable Hole, taking out their Kavu. Nothing from the opponent. We'll play out our Strand, then play out our Urza. And opponent scoops up there. Let's get on to sideboarding. We'll take out a Pithy Needle and a Relic for two Solitudes. Game two. Starting hand is a little slow, but we'll keep. Runko's turn one Fetch Shock for a Ragavan. Ooh, 
two solid hoot off the top. Huge draw. We'll go planes and then fire off a solitude now, killing their Fragman. I'm gonna fetch rocks again and then place out a wild noddle. Wow, and we drew the perfect card. We will fetch out an island, play out our sword of the meek, and set up a doctor founder next turn. I'm gonna tax in for three shocks and esteem vents and nothing from them. So we will play land into a boundary. In response past a ley line binding, taking out our sword of the meek. So then we'll cast out our portable hole and take out their nakadal. Opponent picks up Gigantha. Uh, another one ring for us. Not a good draw. I'm gonna place out another nakadal. We draw a tap land and pass back. I'm gonna tax in three. Then plays out a tap tomb. Top deck stone forge. We will cast out a one ring and we'll draw a card now. Picking up a portable hole. Not a bad pickup. Nothing from the opponent. We draw a shadow spear. Draw an additional two. Then we'll play out a portable hole into a stone forge mystic and pick up a cauldra. Playing out a flood strand. And on our end step, they bolt our stone forge. Our dashes out a ragaman. A tax in and we'll actually pay one sack the one ring and try and get a blocker here. And that happens. Taking down their ragaman. Then they fire off a tribal flames, taking us down to eight. Draw another tapped land. We'll add a one ring. Draw a card. Play out a saga into a shadow spear. When it does nothing, we top deck an Urza. We'll draw two with the one ring. Finding a cavern, which we'll play out named Artificer. Cast an uncounterable Urza. Then we will cast out another one ring. Draw in a card. Finding a talisman. Play out talisman and pass back. An opponent scoops it up there. Let's get on to the next map. We are on the play and our starting hand just doesn't have enough land, so we'll mull. This hand's also just a little too land light, so we'll mull again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we're keeping. We'll lead on turn one, tap tile fountain. Opponent leads on turn one, forest. We'll play out our saga. The opponent also plays out a saga into an explorer and a bounce land, meaning we're probably with this titan here. Draw a hole, not a great draw. Play land, pass. And on the end step, we make a construct. A spell bomb for us, make another construct. And we're never winning this game, so we'll try and cheese them out somehow by getting Pith and Needle, naming Urza's saga into an island and a either spell bomb packing in for four and we have a besaju taking out our pithy needle into another besaju taking out our aether spell bomb when it flips a mana off saga picking up an amulet playing a razor which puts in a bounce land yeah and they have a summoner's pact and they still have a land drop so we will scoop it up and get on to sideboarding we're going to take out a pithy needle a relic ingenious smith and portable hole for two wear tears and two dampening spears game two starting hand looks quite strong we don't turn one a ganjo into a spell bomb it plays out a saga into an amulet Top deck a cavern, play that out into a dancing spear. I'm gonna place a Valakid into a defense grid. Find a sentinel. We'll pop our spell bomb, drawing a card. Okay, we will play out land, talisman into an Esper Sentinel. Oh no, I got got by a dancing spear. I'm stupid. Okay, whatever. This thing has text. I forget sometimes. I'm gonna float some mana off saga, picking up an expedition map. And they play out a Besaju into a Dryad. Playing out a Mega Gardens. We top deck a Metal Cyst. We will play out our One Ring. Draw a card. Play land and ask because we cannot play our sentinel sadly when it cracks their expedition map finding a simic growth chamber bouncing their gardens playing it back out and then casting another defense grid find a saga we'll draw two with the one ring and we will play out our urza into a saga then play out an esper sentinel and pass back i want to cast out their own one ring giving us a draw off of our esper sentinel and there we go stoneforge mystic does it for us we will play out our after foundry and funnily enough their <laughs> defense grids means that they can't can't even interact with us so we will tap our damping sphere tap our lands play out a stoneforge mystic tap our things cast out a sword of the meek and now we go infinite one hour later untaps and goes for a force of vigor we will draw a card with our esper sentinel and i think at this point we are good enough to let our stuff go we will sacrifice the targets then opponent draws two with one ring tap load a mana off saga mind to search go to combat and swing in for uh i don't know math for blockers ah uh, yes negative 117 good enough for me let's get on to game three game three we're gonna take out three portable holes for three solitudes game three starting hand looks pretty decent it goes turn one besage you into an amulet we find a cavern, we'll play out our talent. Then it plays out another amulet into a Slesnia Sanctuary. Then plays out a Dryad into a Valka. And they also have an EE for two. Pretty strong. Find a Naganjo, we'll play out our cavern into a Talisman of Progress. Then it attacks in two. Then they play out a Vesuva, copying their Slesnia Sanctuary. Making enough mana to transmute a Teleria West. Finding a Summoner's Pack. And at this point, we are going to need something. Ooh, that is something. Wow. That was the best draw possible. We will shock in our Sacred Fountain. 
Foundry and cast our Wear Tear Fuse. Take out an amulet and their Dryad. And on the Incept, they pop their EE, taking out our Talisman. One plays out a Besaju. We find a Seacrum Coast. We lay out our Aganjo into a Wondering. Uh, we pick up a Tal Buke. One turn, too short. So it fires off a Summoner's Pact. Picking up a Primeval Titan. Playing out a Cement Growth Chamber, which means that they can cast it, which they will haste up, getting another trigger off of the Amulet. Or off of the titan they pick up a growth chamber and a beside you Ooh, we find a thopter foundry we will draw two with the one ring that is not a bad set of draws here so we will play out our urza and play out our strand up an island playing out the L bomb and in response a beside you our construct interesting and i think that means we actually do it here so we'll play out our doctor foundry then cast out our sword of the meek and opponent punted away this game trigger and that's infinite life uh, i think they're gonna make us go through it again so i'll be right back when, <laughs> when all this is over okay so we made a few tokens and bounced their primeval titan back to their hand one is not just scooping so i guess we're gonna play this one out they pay for their summoners pact and cast out a triad will counter and opponent scoops it up there we will get on to the next match. We are on the play and hand is a little too landline so we'll mull. And our six is not great, but we will keep it and put back a land. We on turn one coast into a relic. And looks like we're up against another amulet gamer. Talisman of progress on a bad pickup. We'll play that out and pass. Oh my, what a start for the opponent. They play out a gardens into another. Oh, they're gonna have they could have five amulets on the board next turn. What the heck? We crack our relic, finding an Esper Sentinel. We will play out a talisman into an Esper Sentinel and a blood strand passing it floats a man off saga finding a map they get a cement growth chamber off the map find it out untapping it three times lay out a triad and a primeval titan so we'll scoop it up there and get on to sideboarding we're gonna take out a needle a relic and four esper sentinels for two solitude two damping sphere and two wear game two starting hand looks much stronger we'll keep this we'll lead on turn one tap foundry when it goes turn one gardens we will play out our secret coast into a thopter foundry when it plays out a talaria west we will play out our urza saga and pass them. I'm gonna place out a Besaju into a Dryad, which we will cast a Metallic Rebuke on. We'll pick up a Shadow Spear, good draw. We'll play out a Cavern into a Urza. Wow, in response, they Force of Vigor our Urza Saga and our Doctor Foundry. Then we will cast out a Shadow Spear, passing. I'm gonna place a Bounce Land, putting a mana off the Garden into a Summoner's Pack, which picks up Dryad. Then they play out a Mirror Pool. Okay, nothing good off the top, so we will lead on spinning with Urza. <laughs> Exiling a Metallic Rebuke, fantastic. Play Land and Pass. Pass. Opponent pays for their summoner's pact into a bounce land, into a Vesuva, which bounce land, picking up their T West. Hey, Ganjo actually fine draw we'll play at our Razor Verd Bridge. Back in with team. Wow, they do block, so we will use our Ganjo and kill their Dryad. Still before damage, we will make a construct. Opponent plays out a Cultivator Colossus, <laughs> putting in a few lands. And yeah, at this point, we are so far behind. We will scoop it up and get on to the next match. We are on the draw, and starting hand looks quite strong. Opponent goes turn one Shell Duck. Isle, we find a stone forge. We'll go turn one relic. Opponent plays out a hedron crab and milling us for three, and we'll exile one ards. Top deck and a conjo. Play out an Urza Saga. Stone forge. Picking up a cultra. Another crab of the opponent to an burrow and a cycled fractured seed. We untap, drawing a bridge. We will activate our stone forge, put in a cauldra, and attack in. And this way, we even get to hold up a metallic rebuke, which is pretty sweet. Opponent shocks in a watery grave. Casting a Tasha City's laughter, and I forgot to unyield. Oh no. That was a mistake. That's an oopsies. We'll float a mana off of our saga. Pick up a shadow spear. Equip shadow spear to our cauldra. Back in. They are bridge and pass back. It returns a burrow to their hand. There's a burrow milling us for six. Then they activate Sheldock Isle. Casting archive trap. All right, well, let's go for the counter spell. And they have a drown the lock to counter that back end. We do not have a way to exile our yard. So opponent has us here. So we'll scoop it up and get on to sideboarding. We're going to bring in two fluster storms and just call it there. Game two, hand looks really Really good here, so we'll keep this. We don't turn one coast into an Esper Sentinel. We'll go turn one island into a crab. Another coast for us. We'll go Saga into a Talisman into a portable hole. Pretty good a turn. Back in for one. Opponent plays out another crab into a land. Million us for three. They fetch out a water grave. Million us for another three. Find a Talisman. Play out our coast into an Esper Sentinel and hold up Saga activation. Opponent plays out a Shellock Isle. Million us for three. And on their end step, we will make a construct. All land. We'll make another.
construct, pick up a Relic of Progenitus, go to combat, back in with the team. The opponent takes a few points of damage, play out Island into Talisman. In step, they fire off an Archive Trap. Oh, what a troll! Oh my, that was so good. Yes, we will fire it off. Such a good troll. And that does counter it. Opponent plays out another land, Melino's Re. Another Metallic Review, play out our land, pumping up the constructs, attack in. And they Ottawara and Block. Pretty good for them. Then we will play out a One Ring and pass back. Opponent plays out a Jace the Perfected Mine, which we will Metallic Review. And opponent scoops it up. Let's get on to game three. Game three, starting hand is perfect. We'll keep this. Pick up a One Ring, go on turn one coast and do Sentinel. Opponent goes turn two Crab into Fetch Land, milling us. Then they fetch again, milling us for another three. And they go for a Surgical on our Urza Sagas. That's fine. So we'll play at our coast into a Portable Hole, taking out their Crab. And we're not going to attack so that we can hold up a Metallic Rebuke. Opponent fires off a Ghost Quarter. We'll go to Mana, picking up an Island. Then they fire off an Archive Trap. Not paying the one. We will Metallic Rebuke that. And then they will Shieldrix Edict us. Pick up another Portable Hole. We'll play out our Stoneforge. And pick up a Nettle Cyst into a Tab Boundary. Opponent plays out a Swamp into a Surgical, taking out our Metallic Rebukes. And then Atasha Hideous Laughter. Another land for us. We'll play out our Citadel to a Urza. Then attack in for one. Nothing from the opponent. Play out our planes. Cast a One Ring. Then do Stoneforge to put in a Nettle Cyst. Go to combat. Attack in for six. I think we're going to get there. Opponent plays out a Makokoro. Draws guard. You pick up a card as well. And they scoop it up. So overall, we did end on a positive record three and two. I think this deck is actually pretty viable and pretty enticing. The only issue is on Magic Online. Demonstrating a loop is really hard, convoluted, and it kind of just depends on your opponent actually just scooping up to infinite life. If I was to pick this up in paper, I think I would want a way to instantly win the turn, even through a one ring of the opponents, because that is something that can come up. Maybe take an extra turn or some type of card that says damage cannot be prevented. But other than that, I think this deck is very well tuned, very fun to play, very aggressive. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.